In this video, we're talking about how to sketch a polar curve, specifically how to sketch a lemniscuit. And the equation that we've been given is r squared is equal to 4 cosine of 2 theta. Now, as always with polar curves, when we're sketching polar curves, we want to take the argument inside the trig function, in this case 2 theta, and we want to set it equal to pi over 2. So we're going to take 2 theta and we're going to set it equal to pi over 2. This is the trick we always use. And then we want to solve this equation for theta. So we'll divide both sides by 2 and we'll get theta equals pi over 4. So this value we just found now, we want to mark off our theta axis here in increments of pi over 4. So we're going to say that we're going to start at 0 and then we're going to say 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, or just pi, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, which is the same as 3 pi over 2, and then 7 pi over 4, and finally 8 pi over 4, which is 2 pi. So we get back to 2 pi. Now what we want to do is we want to take all these values, including 0, and plug them back into this equation for theta to get a value for r. But notice that the equation is given as r squared, so what we need to do is solve it for r. The way that we're going to do that is by taking the square root of both sides. So when we take the square root of both sides, on the left we'll have r, and on the right hand side we'll have positive or negative square root of 4 cosine of 2 theta. Now we can take the square root of 4, we know that it's 2, so we can say r is equal to positive or negative 2 square root cosine of 2 theta. Now what we're going to want to do at this point is to realize that r is only going to be defined when cosine of 2 theta is positive. Because if cosine of 2 theta is negative, then we have a negative value underneath the square root and we can't take the square root of a negative value without imaginary numbers, which we don't want to do. So what we want to say is that cosine of 2 theta has to be positive. In other words, cosine of 2 theta has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now from here, what we need to realize is that the cosine function represents the x value. If we're thinking about the unit circle, right, and all the coordinate points along the unit circle, those coordinate points are given in terms of cosine and sine, or x and y. So whenever we take cosine of the angle, it represents the x value of the coordinate point. So if cosine of any angle is going to be positive, then that angle either needs to lie between 0 and pi over 2, or coming around here, between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. Because those regions, those intervals, are going to be to the right of this y-axis here, all of these values are on the positive side of the x-axis. So in other words, we need 2 theta to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to pi over 2. That would put the angle on this interval here. And because that whole interval is on the positive side of the x-axis, we know that cosine is going to end up being positive, which is going to make this inequality true. So either that or we have to have the angle on this interval here. So we have to have 2 theta greater than or equal to 3 pi over 2 and less than or equal to 2 pi. Now if we solve both these inequalities for theta, we'll divide through this inequality by 2 and we'll say 0 less than or equal to theta less than or equal to pi over 4. And then here dividing by 2 we'll say theta greater than or equal to 3 pi over 4 and less than or equal to 2 pi over 2 or pi. Now when we talk about evaluating the original function at these points, we want to make sure we stick to these intervals. So because theta is going to be defined between 0 and pi over 4, we'll start by plugging in 0 and then we'll plug in pi over 4. So if we plug theta equals 0 into this equation here, we're going to get 0 times 2, which is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2, so the result is positive or negative 2. So if we want to sketch that here at 0, we can have positive 2, or we can have negative 2, which we'll do here in a different color. So positive 2 or negative 2 are our two options. Now if we plug in pi over 4, remember theta is defined between 0 and pi over 4. So theta is defined over this little section right here. So we can plug in pi over 4. Plugging in pi over 4, we get pi over 4 times 2, which is pi over 2, 
cosine of pi over 2 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. So we get r is equal to 0, which means that as we come from 0 to pi over 4, this curve is going to come back to 0, and this curve is going to come back to 0. Now we see here that theta is again defined at 3 pi over 4. It's not defined between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4 because those values for theta would give us values over here on the left-hand side of the x-axis, the negative side of the x-axis, which would give us a negative value underneath our square root. So we have to skip to 3 pi over 4 and plug that into this equation. So 3 pi over 4 times 2 is 6 pi over 4, or 3 pi over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, square root of 0 is 0, times 2 is 0. So r is going to be equal to 0 when theta is 3 pi over 4. So we can go ahead and sketch this point right here. Now we know that theta is also defined at pi between 3 pi over 4 and pi, so we're safe in this interval right here. So if we evaluate at pi, we get cosine of 2 pi we know that that is 1. The square root of 1 is 1 times 2 is 2, so we get positive or negative 2 again. So we can go ahead and plot those points here, positive 2 and we'll say negative 2. And so our curve is going to look like this. And what we realize now is that the interval starts to repeat at this point. So notice that we've sketched the curve from 0 to pi, so that's a full 180 degrees or a full pi radians. So the interval is going to start to repeat. You can see that if we plug in 5 pi over 4 here, we get 10 pi over 4. That's the same as 5 pi over 2. And 5 pi over 2 is the same as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 2. It's the same as pi over 2, which is defined. So cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So we're going to end up with r is equal to 0, and so these curves here are going to come back to 0 at this point, and then back this way. And if we kept going, we would see the same pattern here start over again at 7 pi over 4, between 7 pi over 4 and 2 pi. Now what we realize here is that everything that we're getting above the theta axis is coming from the solution positive 2 square root cosine of 2 theta. And everything below the theta axis here in this blue color is given by r equals negative 2 square root of cosine of 2 theta. So we could go ahead and indicate that here, that this is negative 2 root cosine of 2 theta. And everything above here is positive 2 square root cosine of 2 theta. Now if we try to sketch each of these pieces individually, let's go ahead and call this piece 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we'll go ahead and call this A, B, C, and D. So we're going to try to transfer each of these pieces onto our polar curves separately. So if we start here with 1, what this is telling us is that at the angle 0, we're out a distance of 2, we can go ahead and say here that this is 2 and that this is negative 2. Okay, so at the angle 0, we're out a distance of 2 from the origin. So at the angle 0, we're out a distance of 2. And as we head toward pi over 4, so as we head toward pi over 4, we come back to 0. Here's the angle pi over 4. As we head toward this angle, we come back to 0. Now if we graph section 2 right here, what we see is that we're starting at the angle 3 pi over 4, which is this angle right here. And as we head from 3 pi over 4 to pi, so from 3 pi over 4 to pi, or from 3 pi over 4 to pi right here, we're starting at a distance of 0 and we're going out to a distance of 2. So we're starting at a distance of 0 and we're going out to a distance of 2, something like that. And then from pi to 5 pi over 4, this section right here, we're starting at 2, we're coming back to 0. So we're starting at 2 and we're coming back to 0. So we have here so far 1, we have 2, and we have 3. And if we were to sketch 4, we'd be starting at 7 pi over 4, this angle here. At 7 pi over 4, we're out a distance of 0 from the origin, so we're right here at the origin. And as we head from 7 pi over 4, back to 2 pi, back here, we get out to a distance of 2. So we really are 
just like this, and this is section four. Now, if we sketch A, B, C, D, you'll see that we get the same thing. So if we start here at the angle zero, we're out a distance of negative two. So normally the angle zero is here along the positive direction of the X axis. But because we have a negative value here for R, instead of going toward the angle we want, we go in exactly the opposite direction and we come out to this point right here. Then this tells us that as we move from zero to pi over four, we get back to a distance of zero. Since we're heading back to a distance of zero, this is gonna curl back toward the origin like this. So we can go ahead and say that this is A. And then for B, we're starting at three pi over four, which is right here. We're at zero, so we're right here. Then as we head toward pi, so as we head from three pi over four to pi, or three pi over four to pi, we go from zero to negative two. So here, once we get to pi, we're gonna be out a distance of negative two, so instead of going toward pi, we go in exactly the opposite direction, and we're gonna end up here. So that means our curve is gonna look like this. And then, as we head from pi to five pi over four, we come from negative two back to zero. So we're gonna get this section right here. So this is gonna be b, this is gonna be c, and then this section here from seven pi over four, we're at zero, heading toward two pi, seven pi over four, heading toward two pi, we get to a distance of negative two. So as we go from here to here, we're at two pi, we're at a distance of negative two, which means we start at the origin and we're gonna end up back at this point, so we end up back here. And so what you can see is that whether you use positive two root cosine of two theta or negative two root cosine of two theta, they both trace the same lemniscate and you end up with an identical curve. So that's how you sketch a lemniscate given its polar equation.